Okay, so, welcome to Medieval Monday, the show where I talk about all things medieval, everything from uh, religion to war, sex, and all of that. Some of these topics may be not great for small ears or sensitive ears, so that is your warning. Tonight's episode will be about sex in the Middle Ages. We will be talking about sex, and sex, and lots of sex. So, if that's something you want to know about, hang out. Um, if not... I have comedy videos and time lapses too. So. <laughs> Tell Gilly, thank you. Okay, so one of the biggest questions is did, many pe did people in the Middle Ages have sex? We're here, so yes. Did people in the Middle Ages have conservative, missionary only church sanctioned sex? No. Um, the church did have a lot of rules when it came to Europeans about sex. Um, certain days, certain feasts, certain times. You know what? There's, I actually have a diagram. So, if you look at the di if you look at the diagram, um, it's probably kind of hard to read. Uh, essentially it all feeds back to, it's a sin which is the way that a lot of the church talked about it. Um, you couldn't have sex three days before... Well, you, could, you obviously couldn't have it on Sunday because you're supposed to be in church. You couldn't have sex um, Thursday or Friday because you should be preparing for communion. Um, you couldn't have sex during Lent, which went anywhere between 45 and 67 days. You couldn't have sex during the Christmas season, obviously. Um, you couldn't have sex on Ash Wednesday... You, if it was a day that ended in Y, the church didn't like you to have sex. Um, God forbid if you were menstruating or pregnant or had kids that were conscious. So, yeah, it's um, it, it was it was pretty bad. So, this doesn't mean at all that people didn't have sex, right? Because parents have been telling their kids not to go out and have sex since the beginning of time and, and teenagers will always find a way um there are a couple different uh ideas of where people had sex <laughs> um so the the general medieval home uh for those that lived in homes there wasn't a lot of privacy uh you generally had a large number of kids because um the church wouldn't let you wear one of those little rubber thingies. And uh, it wasn't like you had rooms that the door shut and all of that. So you had to find a place to be intimate. Um, the barn loft, if you were rich enough to have a barn. Um, haystacks. And surprisingly, a lot of scholars actually talk about the one place you wouldn't think that people had a lot of sex. Um, because it was a building that was abandoned... For, or well empty for most of the days of the week um here's the church here's the steeple look inside there's all kinds of people fucking um you know that's that's one of those that people are like yeah okay 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 um but it, it, it more than likely happened so that could turn many pews into is I guess um However, sex was um, not as repressed as people like to think it was. Um, for instance, if you've ever read any of Chaucer, um, the Canterbury Tales, they have in them what is called the fableau. Whoop. The fableau. The fableau are these, um, they're usually small stories that uh, often rhyme and are full of imagery that is considered body. Um, the language is, is a little weird because it's, it's the Middle Ages, um, but it would like be reading penthouse letters today. Um, and they often came with illustrations. So um, we see that in, in a lot of different situations, 
uh, in a lot of different situations, um, medieval people openly dealt with sex and sexual frustration. Um, they also dealt with a lot of problems that, that people have, like erectile dysfunction. So they obviously didn't have the little blue pill uh, back in the day, but they had um, all kinds of remedies. And there was a, a gentleman, I'll get these right, uh, Ibn al-Jazar on sexual diseases, diseases and their treatment, which was not actually the name of the book, but it is what it is. He, um, it's pretty much an anatomy book where he talks about um, the whole body, but he does have some interesting sections on sex and sexual function. So he says, there is also a prescription for an electuary, which I have composed, which stimulates the lust for coitus and is good for cold of kidneys, internal flatulence, and cold of the buttocks. I have tested it, approved of it, and found it to be quite quickly effective. Success is granted by God. Uh, this was written in the ninth century. And um, it, I, I like how it's <laughs> coitus, cold of kidneys, which I'm not even sure what that is, uh, internal flatulence, gas, um, and cold of the buttocks. I have no idea what that is either. Um, but that is a interesting read if you are into that sort of thing. Um, we also have all sorts of um, monks who are doing all kinds of things. Uh, and to show that they kind of had a sense of humor about things, this is uh, an illustration that comes from a Psalter, which is a uh, prayer book that uh, people used to have. And they were often illuminated, which just means that they had pretty drawings in them. Um, they're full of a lot of buttholes. Uh, monks seem to be obsessed with uh, the, the anus and um, drawing it. Uh, so get that off there because that's a little disturbing. Uh, we also have images such as, let me see if I can bring it up. Ah, I must have not got it. Well, I didn't, I didn't get a picture, I thought I did. Anyway, um, there are numerous pictures of uh, what we think of as sort of medieval, right? Um, you know, the, the woman with the, the crown hats on and, and all of that. Um, but the, the Fableau, like I showed earlier, uh, they talk about a lot of things. Um, there's one called uh, Sir Baragrim's Long Asshole. And it's about a lady whose new husband says he's a brave knight and he goes out in the woods and he comes back and it's all beat up and he treats her like shit. Um, come to find out he's a coward and he's going out and beating up his own armor and stuff. And she goes out dressed as a knight and scares him and says, you can either joust with me or you can kiss me on my asshole. And she pulls down her pants, bends over and has him plant a kiss right in the middle of it. Uh, and yeah so the language is kind of weird but it's um yeah so we like to think of of the middle the middle ages as being sort of sexually repressed a lot of times um but everybody was doing it just nobody was talking about it except the monks who drew buttholes so, um, venereal diseases, STIs, ST you know what, it, it's been five different things since I was a kid. I, I think now the correct terminology is sexually transmitted infection, because uh, they wanted to get away from the word venereal, they wanted to get away from the news, but anyway, those things. Um, there were a lot of things that were used to prevent that. Uh, some dating all the way back to ancient Egypt, uh, crocodile dung was used, um, shove some of that up, up there or rub it on there. Uh, if you don't know what a urethral sound is, don't look it up. Um, it's, it's horrible, but, uh, people would use a urethral sound and basically pour straight mercury into their penis to cure, um, syphilis. 
that didn't work and usually killed them uh yeah sdi the 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 clap um the drip the green drip the red drip it's all out there um and then you have uh obviously unwanted pregnancies which were a bad thing uh (laughs) for a lot of people um uh, the thought of an abortion right was sin however the thought of a pregnant daughter was even worse uh there are more pleasant ways than others uh violence was one way that happened unfortunately um but we also have um numerous sources in the uh near east that talk about apple seeds apple seeds contain uh enough cyanide that if taken in a large enough dose will not hurt the uh, mother but will cause a miscarriage um other than that it's i mean there's nothing clinical or sterile about sex in the middle ages it was often filthy um it was necessary um and it was more often than not done under the cover of darkness without a lot of people knowing um unless apparently you were a monk and then you would just draw buttholes all day so that's sort of the introduction to to sex in the middle ages uh questions comments concerns or emotional outbursts yep tmi seriously urethral sound is a it's a modern day fetish so just be careful if you're gonna go search it because no maybe don't do an image search They will walk away with a different perspective, I think, Kiki. There's more picks. Okay, give me two seconds. Okay, so I got more images. <laughs> Maybe some buttholes. Um, so we know that uh, just from the sheer amount of stuff that's out there, uh, the Near East was not nearly as repressed as Europe was when it comes to sex. For instance, we have uh, in India. Where did it go? I want to say it's this one. Yes. In India, we have the Kama Sutra. So, if you're anything like me, you grew up in this book, um, you thought you could do some of these things and you thought it was cool. Um, I've never been nearly that athletic, ever. Uh, And some of them are just 
damn near impractical. Um, so this was uh, this was put out in uh, the 12th century uh, in India and was a guide for uh, men on how to please women, which was not something that Europe cared about a whole lot. The French did, but not a whole lot of other people. So we have that. We have... Doo -doo -doo -doo. What do we got here? Um, you may not think it, but circumcision was also a thing. Uh, once again, not clean, not sterile, but there's an angel pointing to a guy on how to cut off his foreskin. I'm sorry for that one. I really am. God, I hope YouTube doesn't pull this video. Okay, and last but not least, Yet another, from a Psalter, um, that is just straight up weird. Yeah, we're, we're going to put an age restriction on this one. Uh, <laughs> um, monks drew and, and came up with a lot of different things. They were they were really weird. Uh, <laughs> this is one of my favorite ones, just because. Nope, not that one. This one. Ha ha. Flying chicken penises with penis tails. It's hilarious. I don't know why. I just think it's hilarious. You got little penis tails. And it's a penis. With a penis. That's a lot of penises. Well, let me see if I can age restrict it. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Live streaming. Live control room. Forgive me, guys. I'm trying to, uh... Oh, yeah, we'll turn that off. Okay. And... Influence settings. Sorry, guys. Well, I do have a set as educational, so hopefully that will keep it from being flagged. Chicken penises. So many chicken penises. It's crazy. Um, but it was depicted so much in art that uh, a reason... A, blah, blah, blah. The reason that a lot of stuff was destroyed was because of these sort of images. Um, the church had a, a huge purge. The church had a huge purge. Um, chicken penises. The church had a huge purge uh, during the 15th and 16th century as the, the Renaissance sort of the take effect. Uh, the reason that a lot of statues and paintings have leaves over the um, the genitalia was because of the sort of Protestant Reformation that came along and the um, the idea that all of that stuff was uh, private and, and shouldn't be shown. Um, 
chicken penises. If I could get away with it, I would name the stream chicken penises. Um, so you have uh, sex in obviously real life. You have sex in art. You have sex in um, music. There, uh, a lot of the fabliaux can be set to a tune. Um, the problem with anything in history is we may know like how the music was written, how the music, uh, especially if, if the notes are put down, right? Once, once music is, is written in, in that form, we can put it back together. Um, but when you're, you're given poems, uh, a lot of the different uh, bards or people like Chaucer, those were to be sung. They weren't supposed to be read out loud like spoken poetry. It was to be it was to be sung. So the fabliaux, um, a lot of times were were set to music, and you'd hear those in in bars and taverns, inns, saloons, whatever you want to call them. Um, so sex was a really big thing in the Middle Ages, and we we've tried for a thousand years to repress it and and show that everything was godly and everything was quiet and, and only the missionary position existed and monks didn't draw buttholes and chicken penises. Um, it's important to understand uh, the cultural aspect that in a repressive society where you are only allowed to have sex 22 days out of the year uh, or less that um, it's going to be something that is a large part of sort of subculture. And we see that in modern day society. Uh, the United States is a puritanical society. Um, we get goaded all the time because we're not as open about sex as our European cousins. Um, a lot of that has to do with the fact that we were Puritans who found who sort of came over here uh, and we have a history of the Shakers, the Quakers, um, the Shakers especially who didn't believe in sex which is a very strange way to uh, propagate your religion. But, um, well if they came in I, I hope they stayed. That will be your new phone background. Nice. So, any questions? I could ramble on, but... No? Okay. Alright, there was one... Great question. Um, so, homosexuality. <laughs> homosexuality is one of those subjects that um, it seems like it would be a, a no-brainer, right? Um, homosexuality existed. It's existed since the beginning of time. Uh, the Greeks embraced it. They didn't think it was homosexuality. Like, our, our modern concept of homosexuality did not exist. Uh, if we look at it through a modern lens, then we go, well, that's obviously homosexuality. A man having sex with a man is... Or a woman having sex with a woman is that. Uh, however, it, it wasn't as simple as that. Um... Going back a little farther to the Middle Ages, when we go to the Greeks, uh, the Greeks, a lot of times, uh, you would have a mentor-mentee uh, relationship. So, an older man with a younger man. Uh, and quite often, they would have a sexual relationship. It wasn't so important uh, whether or not you had sex with someone of the same sex it was, especially when it came to men, because they didn't, as we move into the Middle Ages, they didn't believe that women had sex for pleasure. So why would a woman have sex with a woman? It didn't exist. Anyway, um, it wasn't so much that sex with a man, but it was who was penetrated. 
Uh, so if you were penetrated, that was something worse uh, than being the one who was penetrating. Um, openly gay people? Once again, all the writing that comes from that time is from the literate people who were the church. So we can only guess by the illustrations and the writing. So I would say the fact that a lot of monks were obsessed with the anus could just be a joke, could be a way to express that, could be a way for people to talk about it without really talking about it. Right, because it was not something you would come out and say. Um, you would not just come out and say, "Hey, I only want to have sex with guys," uh, because that would more than likely, at the very minimum, get you shunned, and at worst, killed in some horrible fashion. Um, prostitution is is sort of the next thing. Uh, so the oldest profession in the world, right? Uh, Prostitution was a sin in the eyes of the church. However, in some of the larger city areas, it was tolerated. So there are records. <coughs> excuse me. There are records of uh, inns um, and rules for inns that if a woman was staying at the inn, that she be provided a bed, a room a bath at least once a week which that was good back then um, two meals a day of good quality uh, water to drink at the minimum and ale or wine uh, with at least one meal and uh, she should pay 22 pence a week and the bath had to be provided the bath and the, and the cleaning materials had to be provided by the the, the inn. Um, so a lot of people read that and go, okay, so if a woman stays at a hotel, but the only reason a woman... So, I mean, she's unmarried, because if she was married, she'd be with her husband. Um, the only reason an unmarried woman would stay at a hotel, or at a hotel, at an inn, for an extended amount of time is because she was a prostitute. Um... The polygamy is a, is another sort of strange one. Um, when you see the, the Near East, what we call polygamy, right? So the the Sultan and his four hundred concubines, right? Um, in the European sense of marriage, no, that that was not something that was accepted. Um, but then again, marriage is another whole subject because there was no elaborate ceremony for marriage, right? You, you as a medieval peasant, you're, you're Sally Sue, and you really like Bobby Brown, who lives on the other side of the hill, um, and you two decide to get frisky in the, the haystacks, and... Bobby Brown says, hey, I like you. We should be married. And you go, okay. And then you go tell a parent and a priest that we're married. And they go, okay. And that's it. The, the legal definition didn't exist. So I imagine polygamy, yeah, I mean, menage a trois is a French word. Uh, that's not really polygamy. That's, you know, more than two. Um, it's actually three specifically. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that's... It's another one of those things. All of these things existed. Every lifestyle fetish that we see today has existed for as long as humans have been able to get erections and become sexually excited. Well... The getting married part was easy. The splitting up was not, right? So if if Sally Sue and Bobby Brown get married, great. If they have sex, till death do you part. Divorce was not a thing. Annulment was a thing, 
if you have the money to pay the church. Um, or if you could show that Bobby Brown couldn't perform or Sally Sue wouldn't because they didn't think women had any sort of issues like that. Yeah, so anybody, you know, hey, we're married. Okay, great. Um, hey, we want to get a divorce. No, you, uh, you, you can't do that. Uh, the church took that sometimes quite literally. So we've covered sort of sex and art. Sex and fablio is is an art. Um, if let me get a title. Hold on one second. Okay, so fablio. One of the. Uh, more common ones is Chaucer's The Miller's Tale. Um, if you read that, you'll kind of get an idea. There is also The Summoner's Tale, uh, The Merchant's Tale. Those are all um, Chaucer. Let's see. No, I don't want Chaucer. Good lord, I want... There's Beregrin's Long Asshole, which is great. Um, Master Ham and Nagy, his wife. There is... Where's the other one? Oh, a good fucking at the graveside. That's a fun one. Um, so those are all sort of examples of titles. Uh, they go from something rather common as a Miller's Tale to Graveside. Uh, yes, abortion was a thing. Uh, like I had mentioned earlier, it was uh, usually accomplished either through violence uh, or drinking horrible concoctions of things, eating handfuls of apple seeds. Um, more often than not, it was violence, though. It was... It's a sad horrible thing and it was a violation of uh it was a sin uh the church would uh depending on the situation like everything else with church right if if it was somebody rich who was protecting the honor of their daughter okay but if you're a wife who doesn't want or i'm sorry if you're a if you're a woman who was raped and doesn't want the child of a rapist and you tried to abort the child that was a uh, mortal sin <laughs> yeah it's uh it's abortion is one of the more depressing parts when you talk about sex uh in the middle ages um the near east was just as bad but what we sort of okay so cultural wise what we hear about people in the middle or in the the near east doing now right when you hear about honor killing and um beating someone up because they slept that that is medieval europe that was the things that happened then um and and not everywhere right like not everybody beat the sh living daylights out of a woman but it, it happened and it's like anything else just a part of history that we can't look at it through a modern lens we have to sort of understand it as um, a product of its time and that, that doesn't excuse it right just like racism slavery all that it, it doesn't excuse it 
but it helps give an explanation. It helps put it in context that we can understand uh, and sort of wrap our heads around a little bit. <clears throat> and sorry if I sound like this because my nose is stuck up. Also, chicken penis. Okay. Um, I want to go back to this guy. So Ibn al -Jazar. Um When you talk about, especially, <coughs> what was the worst thing you could do sexually to get you in trouble? I don't know. Are you a male or a female? Um, if you're male then probably sleep with someone else's wife and get caught or get caught sleeping with a man in medieval Europe. Um, if you're a woman, get, get caught on top, uh, get caught taken from behind uh, by choice, um, get raped, uh, by someone who's not your husband. Uh, the woman got in trouble for that because she obviously tempted the man. Um, get pregnant out of wedlock. Uh, yeah. All of it for women was pretty bad. Every, just about every bit of it. Uh, not a great society for women at, at the time. Um, but... Ibn al Jazar. So he was a poet and a scholar in the 9th century. Um, and what he did is he traveled all around the Near East and into Europe and studied the different sexual and uh, physiological um, aspects of uh, Near Eastern and European cultures. And he wrote a lot. He was a very, very prolific writer. Um, he wrote things uh, mostly about anatomy, and like a lot of medieval scholars, he was wrong about stuff, uh, but he got a lot of stuff that was right. He, um, he believed that if the um, male's testicles were kept warm and moist, then he would be more potent when it came to his sperm. Um, if he was warm but dry, his sperm would be less potent but the man would still have lust because they were warm. A little weird. Uh, if, if everything was cold and dry, then he would have non-potent sperm at all. So he was right about some of that, right? Uh, the, the testicles of, of the man have to be regulated temperature-wise. If it's too cold, sperm dies off. If it's too hot, it actually kills them. It, it's, it's very, very weird. Uh, so it wasn't like people in the Middle Ages were completely... No! Oh! It wasn't like they were completely ignorant when it came to sex and anatomy. Um, they were definitely not ignorant when it came to anatomy. They knew what... Well, they knew just about everything that a man had going on. They didn't understand necessarily what women had going on because they didn't really ask. Um at least in, in Europe. Uh, pleasing a woman sexually was just not on the list of priorities for most European uh, men. You just, she was there to have your child. They, they talk extensively about women and pleasure and how that is a sin. Um, and women who have sex for pleasure are harlots or witches or whatever, depending on your flavor of, of what part of Europe you're in. Chicken penises. Okay. Um, but you... Hello, sir. Welcome, welcome. Um, so 
you have the knowledge of sex, sexual uh, pleasure, sexual ingress, you know, but the culture around it made it a very forbidden sort of thing to talk about. Uh, and like anything, if you're not allowed to talk about it, like I said earlier, with a repressed society, you do things like chicken penis and uh, monks' buttholes. Um, so we see the rates of, like, people ask, you know, what about rates of pregnancy? What about high skinny? Um, what about what about rates of pregnancy, un un unmarried sex, things like that? We just honestly don't know. Um, the church is in control of the stream of information. And the church refuses to acknowledge that things that they deem sinful happen. Um, so you get, yes, you get monks that draw funny pictures. And you get graffiti and you get things like that but actual writings or statistics about abortion homosexuality um polygamy divorce all of those things are there were there were no statisticians to, to take care of that there was no research into that because the church just said that's wrong it doesn't happen we're not going to talk about it um we know that to be blatantly not true because we still do those things, right? It's not like the Greeks did all this stuff, the Romans did all this stuff, Europeans didn't do any of it, and now today we're doing it, right? You, you, when you look at history, you have to look at more than one time period and more than one culture, right? The, the people in the Near East did those things. Um, they talked about erectile dysfunction. They talked about homosexuality. They talked about how to pleasure a woman so in their writings they have it um the french in in some of their writings the, like we mentioned before the fabio they talk about some of those different things uh definitely more body uh than you know like a clinical thing um thanks skinny i i figured if i'm gonna talk all intelligent like i gotta i gotta at least look at uh you blame the Romans? Um, for as much flack as the Romans get for being uh, wild orgy parties and, and that they, they were a pretty sexually repressed society as well. Um, the early Republic uh, senators could literally just have sex in the middle of the street. Um, you just pick a prostitute and throw her up against a, an arch in the middle of the road and go to town. Um, as the Republic sort of moved on uh, during its later days, it, it became very repressive. It was always very repressive for women, but it became very, very repressive. And then you see towards definitely the end of the Republic and, and the rise of Christianity, you, you see things become very restrictive. Um, so, uh, Skinny, yeah, the, the idea of, um, a lot of, well, I mean, the idea of sex has been around, right? But we sort of have this Near Eastern, um, Egyptian, uh, less repression when it comes to sex. Um, they you know all people all all cultures are lustful it's who gets to write down about it um we talked earlier about how people would sneak off to abandoned churches uh but that's you know hypotheses right because nobody as as one scholar said we haven't found traces of semen on uh religious manuscripts so Uh, dive bowl frog. It depends on where you're at, right? Um, so in in parts of Europe, yes, 
uh, family to family to family, right? When you when you live in a village, Hamlet, whatever you want to call it, that only has 35 people in it, and you're all farmers that have been there for generations, the chances are that you're going to be in love with a cousin, or you're going to end up marrying a cousin, or a second cousin, or so forth and so on. Incest um, is was generally frowned upon. Uh, it, it, it was a sin, but so was sex for the most part. Um, so definitely cousins, uh, occasionally brothers taking you know advantage of, of sisters. Um, and there, there was definitely you know abuse by uh, adults. Uh, so it happened, still happens. Um, there's nothing that happened back then that doesn't happen today, and there's nothing that happens today that didn't happen back then. Um, we're just a little more open about certain things. Um, we're not open about a lot of other things. I, unfortunately, Ski, I don't know. Egyptian history is, is one of those that I never really delved into. Um, so I imagine they were lustful, but sexual practices of ancient Egypt, I'm, I can't really speak to because I only know bits and pieces. Drugging someone to take advantage. So while they may not have had roofies, um, they had alcohol. And if alcohol made somebody a little looser, that was something that I'm sure they did. What was Greeks? Die bullfrog. Um, so yes, they, they, they were often, uh, um, alcohol was used to the same effect that it's used today. Um, pharmaceuticals, once again, sure. I mean, that, that's anything that we do today, they, they did before. Oh, getting people loaded? Well, I mean, that's, like I said, they, it was it was a thing, right? Um, offering someone wine, drugging somebody with, you know, drugs, I'm sure. Uh, you know, that that's how a lot of people ended up on ships, definitely. Um, you, you see, like, the idea of being forced into slavery, um, especially on maritime vessels. You would go to the bar at the wharf, have a few drinks, next thing you know you wake up on a ship in the middle of the ocean. So, uh, pirate's life. Okay, so I've spit out a rambling mess about sex in the Middle Ages. Um, if there's questions we've got a few minutes i'll be more than happy to try and answer them. there was no such thing as age of consent uh at all um pretty much there was no age of consent i mean that's the best way to to put it um people were married off people were betrothed married off as early as three months old uh once again, records on that are what the church says. Uh, but, you know, the, the correct thing is, you know, you were betrothed, but then you had to be of age in order to actually get married and consummate the marriage, but that could be 10 years old. Um, once a female started menstruating, they were considered generally of age. That's, that's about as close of a guideline as you can get. Romans, Egyptians, just catch them on the check, see if I answered everything.
So, um, like I said, I've, I've rambled on for just about an hour about sex in the Middle Ages. Uh, I, I promise it was a little more organized in my head than it ended up being spit out. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back next Monday with another Medieval Monday. Haven't decided what I'm going to talk about yet, but I'll, I'll come up with that. Um, thank you everybody who joined the stream. Um, I hope I answered your questions. I, I hope I made sense in answering your questions. Uh, I, as always, could be completely wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, it is with all things in history, I am only correct until someone proves me wrong or proves the hypothesis wrong. Um, we might find a book tomorrow that is, uh, you know, the complete guide to sex in the Middle Ages written in the 12th century. We, we don't know. Um, definitely cool, Skinny. I, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about sex again. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. The, the sex was... I, I would hate to blow my wad on two sex things in a row. Yep. I said that. I said that. <sighs> I'm sorry. Okay, guys. Um, thanks for stopping by. I'm going to do my best to eventually edit these down and put them up as a as a video um, where there's less rambling and me more talk and talking so um, it'd be easier to share and things like that if you have any suggestions for what you'd like me to talk about in a medieval Monday episode uh, make sure you put it in the, the comments um, share these videos uh, make sure you hit the thumbs up for me if you like them and obviously if you haven't subscribed yet please hit that subscribe button for me uh, that's all I got. So uh, until we talk again, you're the internet. I'm the Wombat. Have a great night, guys.